Hi guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm excited to share with you the height field command. This is so useful when you want to make a terrain model, but you don't have any actual topographical information. All you have is an image. Well, you can use Rhino's height field command to actually create a three dimensional topographic model just from the images pixels. If you want to follow along with this video, you can use the link in the description box below to download the files. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell so you don't miss any future videos. All right, guys, let's get started. So I actually did this tutorial for a class I teach on building in space. And, you know, we were looking at these Martian images and trying to see how can we turn these into topographical maps, especially since we don't actually have any you know, topographical drawings or exact heights. Like, how do you take an image and turn it into a physical model? And that's exactly what we're going to do today. So you could go to this NASA website, uh, which shows the Reconnaissance Orbiter Image Gallery, and you could follow along by just choosing any one of these images here. These are all images of the surface of Mars. Um, so, you know, some of these lend themselves really well to this exercise here. So go ahead, uh, pick one of these images. Uh, I've actually been working with this one right here. And you can go ahead and download the file. It'll open up the full image and then you could save image as and you know save it on your desktop somewhere to follow along. All right, I have this image open in Photoshop and I'll show you in a moment why I have Photoshop open. But you see I have the pixels over here, right? 2880 by 1800. So in Rhino, I'm going to go ahead and make a rectangle at those dimensions. And it doesn't matter what units you're using right now. So open up the rectangle command, just click somewhere, and 2880 in the x direction and 1800 in the y direction. And so that gives me this rectangle here. Now you don't have to have a rectangle to do the height fill command, but it's just uh, useful to have it. So go ahead, type in height fill, and it should open up a file browser. So here on my desktop, I have this image. I'm going to go ahead, click open. Now Rhino's asking me, where's the first corner of this image? So I'm going to select the bottom left corner here. And notice as I move my mouse away, it wants to find the next corner. Now I know where that is. It's actually right here. And when I click, it's going to open up another dialog box. Now, depending if you've used this tool before, you may see some different values up here. But generally by default, I believe it's like 20, 20. And 10. So I'm going to leave the defaults for now. I'm not going to check this guy over here. And down here, I'm going to make sure I have surface with control points checked. Okay, because I want to make an actual nerve surface and not a mesh. And I click OK. And you see that something has happened, right? I can tell in the shaded viewport. If I go to my rendered viewport, it looks a little bit strange, but at least my shaded, I can tell something's happening. Let's go in perspective. And you'll see in perspective that. This image uh, has been taken and what Rhino is doing is measuring each point and adjusting the height of the surface based on that point. And it looks like it didn't do 10 feet. It must have done something way higher because that's definitely more than 10 feet. But anyway, the problem with this one is that its resolution is too low, right? It's too bumpy. Those, those points are too far away. And that's because, let me show you, if we run the height field command again, And I click here and click here. Yeah, it went to 300 feet. And maybe that's okay. We'll just leave that at 300. But look at this. It's 20 points by 20 points. That's really not enough. And they're also not proportional, right? I mean, look at my width over here. It's probably around twice the size of my height. So anything that's going in the width, which is on the left, you probably want it to be double the number on the right. So instead of 20, 20, let's try 150 and click OK. And there we go. That's You see how by increasing the resolution, each of these peaks and valleys are now different points. And you see that it starts to approximate the surface a lot better. It still looks quite jagged, and we'll address that later. But at least we're getting closer to the number of points that we need. Let's try it again and double this value. So this time, I'm going to go even three times. I'm going to go 300, 150. Now, Rhino may ask you to save the file because this is going to, you know, it might crash on you. There's a lot of computation to do. So if you do need to save the file now, this is a good time to go ahead and do that. 
And here you can see it's a much better resolution image, but the height field actually does not look so good. You know, I mean, if I had to go ahead and build like a model on this, this would actually look terrible, you know? Uh, look at this. I mean, this is just too much distortion over here. So what we need to do is actually smoothen this out, right? We want the image to influence the heights of the surface, but we don't want it to get all jagged and crazy like this. And that's why I have Photoshop open. So in Photoshop, what I'm going to do is go ahead to Filter, go down to Blur, and just blur this image using Gaussian Blur. Okay, and when you open Gaussian Blur, and you can use another software, of course, if you like. I just prefer Photoshop for this. If the blur is all the way low, notice nothing happens. And then as you move the slider to the right, the image starts to get more and more blurred, right? Now there's a limit that you want to reach. You probably don't want to go this far, but you don't want it to be this stark either, right? So you probably want it where it's just fuzzy enough where it starts to even out some of those details, right? Like right around here, around 10 pixels for me, it starts to smoothen this out. And you can try it at 10 pixels and see, and if it works out well for you, that's great. So here I'm going to go to Save As. So I don't want to override my file. I want to create another file. So I'm going to rename this uh, as Mars Site Blur. So it's another JPEG on my desktop. And go ahead and use that now for the height field. So let's go back to Rhino. I'm going to move this guy over. And also, just one last thing, if under your display you're seeing all these ISO curves, right? If you're not seeing it smooth like uh, the way it's shown on my screen, you can always open up your display tab, okay, and go to surface ISO curves and turn those off if you don't want to see all those extra lines. All right, let's go back here and do height field again, except this time I'm going to select the blurred image, and let's see the difference. I'm going to leave all the other values the same so we see exactly what the difference is. And here, you see that? It's the exact same image in a way, but except the blurred image gives you a lot smoother terrain than the actual image. So I highly recommend you guys play with the blur value when you get these images, just so you get something a little bit better here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. I don't need this one anymore. And this is what it looks like in the shaded view. Uh, this is what it looks like in the rendered view. It doesn't really look very good. And in fact, I want to see the actual terrain. So one thing you can do is click the object, go to its properties, and then go to its material properties. And under material, there's a couple of things you can do, but I'm going to make a custom material over here. And in this custom material, I'm going to call this, uh, you know, Martian surface. Okay. And the way that you get an image on here is under textures. If you see this textures tab, just pull that down, go to color, check color, and here it's going to, again, open up the file browser. So remember, I have two files up here, blur and the original one, right? The blur I use for the height field, the image I want to use, the original. So go ahead, click the original, click open, and it should place the original image on top of the surface. And now you can actually see, you know, the dark areas were pulled down, the lighter areas are pulled up. You see this valley starts to emerge because this area is a lot darker. Right? This is a lot better, you know? And from here, you can actually start to turn this into something even a little more three-dimensional. So if I go back in my shaded view, you know, take this guy, this original rectangle that I had, I'm going to pull this down a little bit and then use the ball on the gumball and pull it up. Okay, so it does something like this. So it's overlapping the topography, right? Then I can click that surface that I may, had made. And remember, this is why we made it a surface, because if it was a mesh, I wouldn't be able to do a trim command and trim off the rest of this, you see, to get this guy. Now, this is my site model. I can even cap this off on the bottom if I want to. I'm not going to join these, because if I join these in the surface, that material that we put on here, which is the Mars image, will try to wrap around the whole object. We don't want that. So I'm just going to leave this as is. Um, and in my rendered view now, this is what it looks like. And that's how you get a topographical map from an image by using height field. Awesome. One last tip I'll give you guys is that if you're working in different views, you know, and you want to see the Mars thing in each of those views, right? So for example, shaded, I don't see it anymore. What you can always do is click on the object and under display, there's this little target icon over here, set object shading attributes. You can click that and then click mode 
and click rendered. And so what it will do is it doesn't matter what view you're in, if you're in wireframe or shaded or rendered or any of the other views, it's always going to show the Martian surface there. So that's just a little uh, display tip for you guys. But yeah, I hope you guys try it out. If you do uh, use another image, I'd love to see a screenshot. Um, you know, if you want, I don't know if you can post screenshots in YouTube, but anyway, share it with me somehow if you have any questions as well. Otherwise, hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and make sure that you download any files using the link in the description box below. And I'll see you guys next time.